الحمد لله الحمد لله نستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن بك ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا فمن يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله بالحق بشيرا ونذيرا اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم إن شاء الله تعالى Today we're going to talk about two things And as I've been telling in the last several weeks That this is the month, the month of Ramadan It is a month of character building So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, tell, has told us the things not to do And is also telling us the things to do and that's how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is shaping us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking us to control our tongues. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking to control our ears, control our eyes, control our hands, control our feet. Control even the desires. Control even the thought process. So it's a complete control. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us how you can control your body and how you can control what is inside your body, your nafs. And slowly and gradually, you get to a point in the month of Ramadan when things become habitual, provided you have been practicing it from the first day. So in the first 10 days, you are tired, you're fatigued, a lot of the things you're trying to adjust to. But over the period of time, it becomes a little bit of norm. So on the day of the Eid, people are pushing you to eat lunch and you're like, I'm not hungry. And they're like, why are you not hungry? I'm not, not hungry. Because your body is so adaptive. Similarly, your soul is trying so hard 11 months in a year that let me out so I may overcome the nafs. And this is the time that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us the opportunity to do so. So that's one aspect. The other aspect of today's talk will going to be that insha'Allah ta'ala in a couple of days we're going to be entering the last 10 days and this, these 10 days Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has asked us to look for odd nights for the Laylatul Qadr. So we'll talk about these two things. So first of all I would like to introduce Surah Al-A'raf ayah number 33. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in this ayah قُلْ Tell them, O Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, tell these people, إِنَّمَا حَرَّمَ رَبِّ الْفَوَاحِشِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not allowed, has completely forbidden for you to do indecencies. Now when fawahish are of two types, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about both of them in this ayah. مَا ظَهَرَ مِنْهَا وَمَا بَطَنْ the indecen- indecencies that you hide, also the indecencies that you show. What are the indecencies that we show? When we communicate with other individuals, the indecencies, that is part of the fawahish. And when we have ill thoughts about other individuals, those are the inside ones. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forbidden for us to exercise either of them. مَا ظَهَرَ مِنْهَا وَمَا بَطَنْ وَالْإِثْمَ وَالْبَغْيَ بِغَيْرِ الْحَقِّ And sin and rebellion against justice. Now if we look around us, none of us are justice of any of the courts. However, in our daily life, we all encounter positions and situations where justice is required. You are communicating with people at work, justice is required. You cannot have two different ways of communicating with two different colleagues. Similarly, if you are a supervisor, same applies. If you're in a school set up, in a classroom, same deal applies. So it doesn't matter what walk of life you are in, you have to always maintain the justice. And it is forbidden for you, وَأَن تُشْرِكُوا بِاللَّهِ that it is forbidden for you to exercise and associate anybody with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is laying some foundations for us to work upon. Now moving on 
to another ayah from Surah At-Tawbah. This is ayah number 112, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving good tidings to who? Mu'mineen. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts mentioning their qualities. And there are people who have more than one of these qualities. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, At-ta'ibun. Those who repent. Subhanallah. This is the month where people are so moved inside out that they exercise repentance. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Al-Abidun, those who are my worshippers. Now this is the month where people go an extra mile to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Al-Hamidun, those who praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Once again, people go an extra mile to praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as And these are the people that keep themselves away, away from some of the worldly desires. What الرَّاكِعُونَ Those are the people who do the ruku' As-sajidun The people who prostrate. And then this is the very important piece. Al-amiruna bil-ma'roof wa-nahuna anil munkar The people who exercise goodness and also tell other people to do good deeds. The people who themselves refrain from bad deeds and also tell people to refrain from bad deeds. And these are the people who also make sure that they never cross the boundaries laid by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what should these people then receive? وَبَشِّرَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ O Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, tell these believers the good tidings. So what is the good tiding? Of course, the good tiding is Jannah. These are the people who really, really, truly deserve to be there. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is laying foundation in the book. And these are the things to be exercised all year round. This is just a boot camp for us to refresh our memories and say, oh, this is basically how my life should be like. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is laying these foundation. In Surah Al-Shura, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in ayat number 37 says, وَالَّذِينَ يَجْتَنِبُونَ Those people who hold themselves off, كَبَائِرَ الْإِثْمِ from the big sins, والفواحش, and the decent indecencies, indecencies. وإذا ما غضبوهم يغفرون. And when they're angry at anything, they forget. Subhanallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is laying another beautiful foundation for us to exercise. When you're angry, yes, the best thing for you to do is let go, forgive. We had a whole section last time I was here when we talked about this. So these are some of the character building entities Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us. You should refrain from indecencies and then you should exercise my worship and make sure whatever you do, you are within the hudud Allah, within the boundaries of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Never try to tra- transgress or cross my boundaries. Now let's move on to the hadith part. Al-Hadith al nabawiyya this hadith is reported by Al-Bukhari and At-Tirmizi. And Abi Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu narrates, قَالَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, مَنْ لَمْ يَدْعُ قَوْلَ الزُّورِ بِالْعَمَلِ وَالْعَمَلَ بِهِ فَلَيْسَ لِلَّهِ حَاجَةٌ فِي أَنْ يَدْعَ طَعَامَهُ وَشَرَابَهُ Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that anybody who does not refrain from ill talks and anybody who does not refrain from doing bad actions during the month of fasting while the person fasts, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not need your hunger strike. Basically, this all you're doing is you're doing a hunger strike because the sown, the fasting has not yet moved you. The idea of the fasting is it should move you. It should bring in a change. Now, 19 days down the road, we need to reflect upon ourselves and say, have I changed? Am I the same person that I was in the first of Ramadan? Are my habits exactly the same? Or have I noticed any difference in me? So this is the month to reflect upon ourselves. Now the good people are those who reflect upon themselves every day before they go to bed. What did I do today that was right? What did I do today that was wrong? What ill thoughts came to me that I did not let overcome me? And what ill thoughts came to me which overcame me? And they actually make a little ledger like an Excel sheet columns. For each one of them, they maintain it every day. And then every day they go back to the previous days and see, is it a continuing habit or is it something that I can overcome? If it's a continuing habit, then I must seek help. 
That means I am not able to foster this problem by myself. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given this opportunity for us to reflect upon. In another hadith, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, it's muttafaqun alayh, reported by both Imam al-Bukhari and Imam al-Muslim. As-siyamu junnah. Your fasting is your shield. Just like during a war, your shield protects you. The fasting protects you because everything else around you is chained. All you now need to do is concentrate on yourself. Now this is a beautiful thing that Prophet Muhammad said to, told us that now I need to concentrate on, on myself and this will tell me how bad am I as an individual when everything else is chained. When everything else is chained, if I'm still doing certain things, that means I'm tainted inside. I need to fix that erosion problem. So this is the this fast is shielding from outside, so you get to now work on your inside. فَلَا يَرْفُثْ وَلَا يَجْهَلْ And in this process, you should not either talk ill, nor you should say things which are ignorant or arrogant. And if anybody approaches you with the idea of fighting with you, arguing with you, and taking you towards the fawahish, ma ظَهَرَ مِنْهَا وَمَا بَطَنْ And then the outside one or the inside one, then what you should say? Two times. فَلْيَقُلْ إِنِّي صَائِمٌ مَرَّتَيْنِ So that is quite possible. The other person may not hear the first time. The second time is an emphasis. That is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also in a lot of the times in the Qur'an does emphasis. Like when he's speaking to Musa alayhi salam, doesn't say, Anallah, innani anallah. Emphasis. Sometimes when you emphasize something multiple times, you're also telling yourself it's important. So that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through His Prophet is trying to tell us that when you encounter these problems, then this is how you should verbally communicate to the other people that I'm in a situation when I cannot get into what you are into. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through His Prophet in another hadith reported by Ibn Majah and Nisa'i and also Abdullah ibn Mubarak reports it. قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم رب الصائم ليس له من صيامه إلا الجوع so the person who gets involved in all these ill activities, then his fasting is nothing but a hunger strike. And when he stands up in taraweeh, and he stands up in the night prayer, it is nothing but he's just being up all night. If it hasn't made a difference, if it hasn't changed you, if the people around you are still feeling, oh my God, what kind of individual is this? Then it has not made a difference. So that's the whole point of Ramadan, that it should make a difference. Now going to the second part of the khutbah, as I told you, Laylatul Qadr. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, sometimes you, this is a beauty of the Qur'an. You read an ayah in the Qur'an, and then you need another ayah from the Qur'an to explain it. Subhanallah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Dukhan says, Inna anzalnahu, we have revealed this book, fi laylatim mubaraka, on a very, very blessed night. Now comes a question, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which night is this that you haven't talked about in this ayah, which is the blessed night? In Surah Al Qadr, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna anzalnahu fi laylatil qadr. We have revealed to you this book on the night of Qadr. So that makes it a blessed night. So sometimes Quran explains itself. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala questions us. Can you even comprehend or understand what am I talking about? It is Laylatul Mubarak, a blessed night. But do you even understand what I mean by this blessed night? Of course we don't, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then he explains Laylatul Qadr, this night. خَيْرٌ مِّنْ أَلْفِ شَهْرٍ This is better than a thousand months. Thousand, better. It doesn't say it's equal to. It says better. And spirituality is at its peak. تَنَزَّلُ الْمَلَائِكَةُ وَالْرُوحِ From the heavens descends the angels and the Jibra'il alayhi salam بِإِذْنِ رَبِّهِمْ By the permission of their Lord. Min kulli amr. Salamun. It's a peace and a blessing and tranquility. 
هي حتى مطلع الفجر till the rise of the sun or till the fajr time it is a blessed night so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first of all lays this foundation now let's talk about two things this is from hadith al-Nabawiyah reported by Imam Bukhari and Imam Muslim muttafqun alayhi an Aisha now before I move forward I want to tell you something that I have actually experienced when I go through these hadiths. That whenever I run into these kind of hadiths, which is an Aisha, that tells me that inside the house of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, they used to have communication, conversation about understanding the faith. That's the Aisha reports. She would question, and Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam would answer, and very beautifully he would answer. Sometimes he would answer saying, Oh, the daughter of the truthful. Ya bint al-Siddiq. Now this is with love and compassion. As he's happy that she's asking questions. Not get mad for asking questions. So, An Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, she says that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Taharru laylat al-qadri Look for this night, the Laylatul Qadr, in the last 10 days of the Ramadan, it will fall on odd nights. Now what are the odd nights? The odd nights is, for example, I'm just giving an example. If today is the 20th fast, and tomorrow will be the 21st fast, so tonight will be the odd night. Okay? So if you are fasting an odd number the next day, the night before is the odd night. So the night of the 21st, the night of the 23rd, the night of the 25th, 27th, 29th, these are odd nights. Means the next day, your song will be an odd number song. So the night before is basically Prophet Muhammad said, look for this night. Then Abi Huraira also reports, عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال من قام ليلة القدر Whoever stands in the night prayers or any form of worship in the night of the ليلة القدر But here are the two things إيمانا وإحتسابا Only for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Not for anybody else Not for the show off not for the money, not for anything else, only for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will going to forgive his sins, whatever he has done. And وَمَنْ صَامَ رَمْضَانَ imana, And whoever fasts during the daytime, in the month of Ramadan, again, إِمَانًا وَإِحْتِسَابًا For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, وَغُفِرَ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ ذَنْبِهِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will also going to forgive his sins, whatever he has done in the past. Now, why two things? Could have easily said, whoever worships in the month of Ramadan, good. Or whoever fasts in the month of Ramadan, good, I'll forgive you. Now, if you look around, there are a lot of people, because of whatever condition they are in, they cannot fast during the daytime. Medical condition could be possible, traveling, or many other factors. However, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is also giving them leave it because He is Rahim, He's merciful. Okay, if you can't fast during the daytime and you have given the fidya to ta'am, but still I'm giving you an opportunity so that you can also get to forgive your sins. On the other hand, there are people who can fast during the daytime, but their work hours are so rigorous that they cannot be up all night. They just can pray Salatul Isha and Sunnah and the Witr and they go to bed. Because the Isha is so late, they have to go to work early in the morning. Some of them actually drive to work right after the Salatul Fajr. So for them, there is another leeway. If you fast during the daytime, but considering with faith, then I'll, I'll going to forgive your sins as well. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is extremely merciful on us. And Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha qalat, another one from Aisha radiallahu, Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, qultu. Now this is, this is where comes a very, very beautiful thing which I've been talking about, that they used to have conversations. She said, I asked the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ya Rasulullah, O Prophet of Allah, Ara'ayta in alimtu ayyu laylatin laylatul qadr? If I come to know the night of Laylatul Qadr, 
Ma aqulu fiha. What should I say in that night? So Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam taught her a dua. Qala said, "Quli, Aisha, say this: Allahumma inna ka afuun kareemun tuhibu al afwa faqfu anni. Allah subhanahu wa taala, you are kareem. You are the forgiver. Please forgive me. Please forgive me." Now here, if you notice, the word ghafur is not used. Afu is used. Now there's a difference in Arabic language between the two words. Maghfira means you have been forgiven, but your account is still written in the book. There is a proof that you have done this. Af means you have been forgiven and the account have also been erased. So there is no evidence of you have done this. So ask this from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ask al-af wal-afiyah. Ask from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the highest degree. That's what Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said. When you are asking for the jannah, ask for jannah al-firdaus. The highest place in the jannah. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can give anything. We are the one who are not asking enough. We are the one who are reluctant of asking. And we don't know why we are so reluctant of asking. Maybe it has to do something with our faith system. But we need to work on it and reflect on upon ourselves and improve ourselves. And probably whenever possible, whenever possible, spend a little bit more time in trying to improve ourselves through the ibadah by worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by becoming better individuals, by becoming better communicators, better family person. Somehow, each of us know what's lacking in us. And each of us can then reflect upon ourselves. So there are a lot of other things that I wanted to bring forth to you. However, I'm going to close it out with this one last hadith reported by Imam al-Bukhari on the authority of Sahal ibn Sa'ad. That the Messenger of Allah said, in paradise, there is a gate which is called Rayyan, the Babu Rayyan, through which only those people will enter who have fasted. No one else shall be allowed to enter through that gate. Subhanallah. So this is a special arrangement made by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for those who fast. Similarly, for other people, there are special gates too. In another hadith, when Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa was talking about the gates through which these different people will enter, and after they would have entered through those gates, those gates will be closed for everybody. It's pretty much like if you're a VIP at a certain place, you are asked to come in, and once you come in, the gates are closed. If you go to the airport, and if you're traveling through business class or first class, you have a separate line. They ask, are you first class? Okay, only then you can go in this line. Otherwise, the line is closed for everybody else. So Prophet Muhammad was talking about all these gates. And Abu Bakr was sitting in his presence. Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala and he said, Ya Rasulullah, will there going to be anyone who will have a choice of entering through either of the many gates that he decides to enter? Prophet Muhammad said, Yes, Abu Bakr, you may be one of them. Subhanallah. So there are going to be those people as well that they had accomplished so much highest degree of worship that they will be given a choice. These are the doors. Pick whichever one you want to pick. May Allah make us among those people who, have, who are given the choice on that day. May Allah make us among those people who can enter Jannah without any question and answer. May, may Allah make us among those people that when the people will be resurrected and get together, before they will be asked any questions and answers, an angel will gonna come forth and say, where are the people who used to be up all night? And used to pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, follow me, you shall enter the Jannah without any Q&A. May Allah make us among those people. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائل المسلمين فاستغفروا إنه هو الغفور الرحيم.